morning welcome teachers and all viewers today day 7 so i welcome you all for a cat 2 spoken english series of scrt streaming on youtube and the uh, scrt official uh, channels so ee roju we to the team on this morning and resource person ga we have dr k n shobha garu from uh, chennai and the today's topic is uh, vocabulary and spoken english so really amazing uh, uh, i welcome uh, dr shobha garu namaste ma'am and i also welcome pokuri shrinivas garu uh, to the session i request pokuri shrinivas garu um, to introduce uh, shobha garu to the viewers uh, yeah thank you ismail uh, welcome on the day today we have a, a fresh session with uh, dr shobha madam garu uh, so uh, we all know her well but uh, we remember all the all the uh, you know uh, about uh, madam now shobha ken is a teacher researcher and a teacher educator currently working as a assistant professor of english uh, at anna university and she is a gold medalist uh, um, uh, in masters education and usa certification uh, in teaching english uh, Dr. Shobha has authored textbooks and workbooks with the Cambridge University Press and the Orient Black, uh, Black Span for Learners of English Language at a tertiary level. And she is also uh, of the strong uh, conviction that 21st century skills of communication, critical thinking, creativity and collaboration are the vital to both learners and teachers of English language because English opens doors. So, Madam, please open the doors of all our underprivileged teachers. Heartly welcomes to this session. Thank you so much, sir. So good morning, Andhra Pradesh. A very fresh morning with lots of new ideas, just like Srinivas sir mentioned. And I have also told you many times that English opens lots of doors. So we are trying to explore spoken English. We are trying to learn certain concepts that are both new and old. When we are trying to learn new concepts, there are so many things that we will have to change change in our outlook, accept a lot of new ideas, new ways of learning. Okay, so we are trying to give you the best. And hopefully, I'm expecting all of you to practice with the materials that are being shared. And with this small introduction, let us go to, to today's session. So as you all know, today's session is a very important session, vocabulary. So vocabulary, as you all know, is nothing but words. Vocabulary refers to the voice that is coming from inside. We saw phonetics, how various sounds are produced. So vocabulary refers to words and the sounds the words make. So let me share my screen now. So vocabulary for spoken skills. Even before the session started, there were many queries. Is it vocabulary for spoken skills or vocabulary and spoken English? So now you have started thinking all these small words, small ideas. What difference does it make when we say vocabulary and spoken English, vocabulary for spoken skills definitely has an impact to make, right? So let us try and go into the session today. So, look at the quotation I've used today. It says, the limits of my language are the limits of my universe. This is from Gathe. He is a German philosopher. But then I look at this particular sentence. Most of us, when we speak in our mother tongue, we are able to express our thoughts, our feelings, in a very clear manner, there are so many nuances. Nuances means little differences in words, right? We want to use the correct word to express the situation. When we are talking about our family, when we are talking about our emotions, there is a range of human emotions. And whenever you want to express, it can help you. That is why poets play with words we say that is why songs are such a huge hit 
when it comes to movies so whenever you are trying to think whenever you are trying to express you need so many words of course in mother tongue we know so many words we are trying to express ourselves in so many words that we know that we have learned but when it comes to learning a new language language anymore in english we know other words we know you know plenty of words we know but then still in order to speak fluently vocabulary is very important that is why whenever you have very limited vocabulary very little words that you know a small amount of words if your word bank is it becomes difficult to speak fluently so most of us want to know how we can speak fluently because we are always searching for the right word that is why always remember the more words you know your limit will break there will be an expansion of ideas so always remember the limits of my language are the limits of my universe map for the section today we are going to look into three aspects we are going to try and understand what is vocabulary then we will as about how to improve our vocabulary and then we will see vocabulary for enhancing speaking skills what kind of vocabulary is needed so there must be one question in your mind now is there a separate vocabulary for written skills yes when you are writing sometimes there is a need to express your thoughts clearly right because writing is serious business once it is registered it cannot be you know uh, reversed but speaking when we speak we substitute the quick word we expand the idea so there are certain words that are essential when you are speaking we will look at that and lots of examples because i think when we are learning spoken english examples are absolutely important as i told you earlier don't think that vocabulary is a very big grammatical term or it's a scientific term vocabulary is a very simple term it means nothing but words 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 when i was designing this ppt i was just looking for you know various uh, background uh, themes and when i looked at these color now say you are in first grade or second grade student you know when you are a crayon box with 10 or 12 colors drawing the child will not know which color to use but then as we grow we need more color us to draw when you go to an artist you will see the number of paints the colors the shades that are available so most of you will have the experience of choosing the colors for painting your walls in the houses you will say no this pink is a little darker i want a lighter shade this yellow is very bright i want a different shade right similarly in vocabulary also when you are speaking you need a different range a wide variety of words okay so you cannot make do with the 10 or 12 colors you used in class 1 or 2 you need more colors you need more words to express yourself so when it comes to english now we might have 12 or 24 for colors but now we need a big box of different colors so what should we do to improve the difference between the right word and the almost right word is like the difference between a lightning and a lightning bug so lightning has more power if you are using the right word the feedback that you get the effect that you get will be like a lightning if you are using a very weak word simple word without much thinking then the effect will be like a firefly or a lightning bug that is why it is important to know many words so when you are speaking for increasing your fluency we need to know more words now triangle 
there are three tiers in this triangle tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 yes it is pronounced tier it is not tier it is tier in vocabulary tier 1 refers to all the basic words that are in language we use all these words every day word you know inside book yes low animal street and also we we use normally this word you know it comes out very fluently for anyone who speaks look at the tier 2 these are called the high frequency academic words that are found across subjects what do i mean by high frequency academic words textbook and inside the textbook there is a vocabulary list something like a glossary so in the new curriculum you have a glossary where you have the english word and the telugu word so there is a translation list given of all the high frequency academic words so these high frequency academic words refers to the words that are there in the textbook and the telugu version is also given so now we are all very comfortable with tier 1 words tier 2 words we have to learn so as soon as we get the textbook we will be going through it we will be checking the ideas we will see how it can be transacted best in the classroom so some words that are given again if you look at tier 3 words these words are very specific to that area so these words will be necessary for high school teachers for high secondary teachers when you are going to specialize in that area when you are teaching poetry you will be teaching alliteration okay the sounds alliteration refers to repetitive sounds in poetry so the tier 3 words are high frequency words and they are not used very frequent one and tier 2 words so as school teachers who are trying to strengthen our spoken english we have to focus more on the one and two level words this awareness we should have we should not say when we look at a word this word is so big why how will i memorize this word how will i memorize the meaning how will i pronounce this word don't worry we are not going to focus on all those kinds of words we are going to focus on the tier 1 and the tier 2 words tier 1 we already know almost uh, 50 to 60% of the words are already there in our vocabulary when it comes to spoken english we should check how we can put together and use that word okay so please keep this in mind even in your reading material i have given more uh, explanation about this the second thing i want you to understand about vocabulary is passive and active vocabulary i usually focus on this aspect whenever i do a webinar or a class mostly when you read you will understand okay at least most of the words you will understand and if i tell the word you will say yes i know the word the word means this which means that that particular word is in your passive vocabulary passive means it is not doing anything it is simply sitting inside our head okay those are the words that you understand but you cannot use when you are speaking or writing it is dormant dormant means no act like you know nothing is very active it is just sleeping you know dormant volcanoes so dormant volcanoes fire is inside you never know when it will explode okay so dormant vocabulary is there inside every human being active vocabulary so words that we generally use when we speak or when we write those are called as active vocabulary okay so how to make the passive vocabulary come to active vocabulary so all those words are inside we know the words we understand them if using them how do we activate our passive vocabulary now you know inside your mobile phone there are so many apps there are so many facilities right when we buy a sim card we know that there are so many facilities but until we activate all the facilities we do not know that they are there inside our mobile phone 
so mobile phone is very powerful it contains everything so in the last class i was telling you look at these videos look listen to these podcasts i hope some of you went and explored if you have went and explored please entered in the you know youtube uh, chat i will be very happy to read it later whether you were able to access those videos you know i told you about the movies some tv series i mentioned mind your language if you have started watching all that if you have started listening to the podcast just type in the youtube chat i will read it so how to activate our vocabulary how to bring the passive vocabulary so that we can use it what is the use of something if it is simply lying there right so vocabulary is also like that there is another thing called as ad hoc vocabulary what is this ad hoc ad hoc means urgent temporary something that is there for that particular season now today if you ask all these words have become common words in our vocabulary till last year we didn't know what this covid 19 was we never used a word called containment zone we never used social distancing we never used the word you know epidemic or pandemic quarantine isolation so this is called ad hoc vocabulary which means that it is used for that particular reason for a particular period of time after some time it might go out of our vocabulary yes hopefully it should go out of our vocabulary very soon so this is called as ad hoc vocabulary all of us know these kind of vocabulary also so flatten the curve flatten the curve refers to because there is a high increasing level we are saying it should become flat the numbers should come down so epidemic refers to a disease that spreads very fast very wide inside a country or something pandemic pan means all we say panorama vision in our mobile phone pan means all bigger view okay so you know the panama canal pan all america so it is connecting americas right where is panama canal between the north and the south america so you have certain ideas to understand of course quarantine all of you know so we are all scared of that word nobody wants to go into quarantine and isolation refers to somebody is being separated uh, we are all talking about all computer assisted language learning mall mobile assisted language learning now there is a new term coming in elt in english language teaching which refers to talin okay talin teaching and learning of english in isolation this is very scary no because whenever we think about teaching or learning we only think about groups groups of people sitting together discussing arguing that is how learning happens socrates aristotle all these people talk about learning as discussions but today we are talking about isolation okay moving on how to increase our active vocabulary you have to understand that if you are simply reading and memorizing words or looking at word lists that will not improve our fluency for our fluency to improve it is absolutely necessary that we pull all the words from our passive vocabulary and put it in our active vocabulary okay and you also have to decide what words you need to use related to your area now as classroom teachers in schools if i know the words that are related to that particular context it is enough i am not a doctor or nurse or an engineer to know all the words that is related to that area of course i teach in a university a technical university so i have to learn those words also but in the context what words are important we are going to focus only on that and one more idea to increase our active vocabulary is to do a lot of active listening i don't have to tell you what active listening is and you also have to record and review record in the sense notice and note down all the words that you are learning and also review them uh, review in the sense of keep revising and make a habit to learn at least three words per day when you are reading the newspaper or when you are watching the television some new word comes 
then you keep listening to it okay you keep referring to it you keep using it that is very important so moving on to how to improve our vocabulary definitely what is the first secret the first secret is motivation we have to be motivated a lot because the limits of your language is the limits of your universe if you want to achieve more you have to learn more learn more words and also use them you have to be motivated for that that is absolutely essential and then you have to read and also listen we saw in the previous uh, class also how reading and listening are receptive skills they are input right so you have to focus on that also now one common complaint i get from many students and teachers is when they are reading something they are saying ma'am i tried reading the newspaper because you told me but then suddenly there are so many words that are sounding all greek and latin to me i can't understand these words right i will tell you the reason because they are usually from greek and latin most of the english words i have an example here now vaccine this is also from our ad hoc vocabulary everybody is talking about whether a vaccine has been invented this so vaccine comes from the latin word which is for a cow i have given the explanation here from vacca which means a cow that is how it was first invented so we have to be conscious of root words it is called etymology i am sure most of you who are watching will agree with me that those who have improved their vocabulary have done through etymology etymology method etymology method refers to understanding the root words the meaning and then increasing your vocabulary so look at this example dict now dict again comes from the latin word which means to speak so to dictate we do a lot of dictation in the classes it means to speak loud for another person to write down right as teachers we dictate now let us see what are the other words that are related to the root dict dictionary because it speaks a lot of words ari means a list or a compile a compilation verdict verdict is what your judges write you cannot change it predict pre means before to say something before we predict the weather right so dict comes from these words of course you have lot of other words which are coming from the root word of dict contradict contra means opposite so if somebody is saying contradict it means why are you saying the opposite diction diction means the range of vocabulary she won the speech contest because of her excellent diction so all of us should have very good diction if we have to speak english well can you now see how from the simple root dict we have learned we saw dictionary we saw predict we saw verdict contradict diction so here after whenever you see this d i c t you will know that it is something related to speech or saying this is one method let me show you another example rect rect refers to straight or right of course we all remember rectangle first a shape that has right angles that is straight and correct accurate and free of mistakes rectify you have to rectify your mistakes we say rectify the errors we say as teachers we use the word a lot so next time when you are performing you have to rectify all these errors we say director so director is somebody who has to see everything is right so here you have a director whose job is right so if you go on the internet and if you start exploring the root words there are so many examples like this knowing the root words can be extremely important to learn more words
to understand the meaning of the words and also to use them as teachers we know that whenever we learn through a method and it proves to be successful we also use it with our students right you want to give it to your students you want to see how they are learning so children are very good if you use this method they will improve their vocabulary excellently okay so i strongly recommend that you use the root word method and also improve your vocabulary so if you see in english with 2500 to 3000 words i am sure you already know 1000 to 1500 words we can easily understand 90% of everyday english conversation if you want to read english newspaper or magazine and in the workplace that is in our school this many words are enough you will be thinking madam 3000 looks like a big number do i really know all those words if you sit and start writing in a list you know if you start listing out the words that you are already using it will cross 1000 because even when we speak telugu there are so many english words that we use right so don't think 2500 and 3000 is a big number we already know that that many number of words so you don't have to feel scared about the big numbers i'm going to give you 10 tips that work when it comes to improving our vocabulary of course the first thing is read voraciously now what is this word voracious now you have this one month two month time till you return to your schools in august you have to tell yourself i am going to do this you have seen a painter right when he wants to choose the color when he wants to finish a painting there is so much of hard work that is going into it that he is not satisfied with the 10 or 12 colors you give he keeps looking for more colors similarly we have to keep looking for more words to improve our vocabulary so for this you have to make friends with your dictionary when i am saying make friends with the dictionary i am not asking you to go and buy one big dictionary your mobile phone has so many online dictionary options with pronunciation also it comes yesterday purnima ma'am was also talking about how you can use google for pronunciation so use all this the third point is the most important point use it or lose it if you are not using it you are going to lose it okay so if you are not going to use the word that you have learned so whenever i used to travel especially in andhra pradesh i will be very you know i'll be listening keenly to what people are speaking so i will try and mix and match words i understood that uh, you know tondraka means come fast and uh, lopla means inside so during the tea breaks and everything when i used to do my trainings there i will say tondaraka lopula randi i will say so they will be saying how did you learn this particular sentence so correctly so i will keep using it very often so that i don't lose that sentence see now for the past 2 3 months i never had the chance to speak in telugu but then sometimes i very playfully keep telling it to my children also because that sentence we use a lot right come fast inside so we have to use it or we have to lose it whether there is a context or not at home we have to use the sentence learn at least one new word a day i told you at least three words understand the true meaning of the words that is also important the sixth point worked for me and most of my students maintain a personal notebook of words write in that notebook what word i learned if that word can be from the newspaper it can be from the webinar that you are going through write the words it can be from the comments that your friends are posting okay and keep a personal notebook of words or phrases also phrase means two or three words together follow a process so for each of us each process works it can be the etymology method the root word method or it can be some other method that works for you you have to play and have fun with that particular words i am going to give you a lot of examples now to find out how we can play with words and have fun also leverage every so resource you can what is this leverage to exploit 
to put the maximum use of so you have to do that whether it is a podcast whether it is a story book whether it is a story i mean a magazine and then diversify see imagine i tell you read the dictionary every day so every day you read a one alphabet today you read a so in 26 days you will master all the alphabets and the words that are starting in the dictionary is it possible it is not possible you will tell me ma'am that's such a boring task even if i read i'm not going to remember so when i say diversify use many resources television movies okay so several uh, resources we have to diversify and learn now let us see when it comes to speaking i spoke about words separately ma'am if i learn all the words how is that going to help me speak fluently that is one question we are going to address today these are the basics that you should remember your passive vocabulary is much larger than your active vocabulary please remember this and you can't use all the english words you recognize in your spoken english not necessary so when i'm going to tell you say for example use all the resources that you have wisely you know if i say leverage all the resources you will be looking at me you say use why you are saying leverage so you have to understand that all the words that you know need not be used in your spoken vocabulary and remember as teachers we are dealing with learners whose vocabulary level is very different from ours so there is no need to use big words also conversational fluency that is very important like i told you fluency is important understanding and conveying a message effectively don't think that fluency means speaking for one hour continuously like me that is not fluency fluency means whether i am going to convey the message effectively though i speak very good english i may imagine oh my english is very good i can speak fluently for 3 or 4 hours but if i am not going to convey my message clearly to you what is the use of all that fluency i can keep speaking on so effectiveness of conveying the message is important and any concept of english language can be described by using other words other words in the sense in english there are lot of synonyms now say for example this is a huge building we can say this is a big building so there are always many words to express now let us go to classroom language what do i mean by classroom language so as a teacher when you go to the classroom there are certain words that we need to know right like i told you tondraka lopla randi please come inside fast i don't have to know all the other big words if i know these few words i can manage for a training session so there are certain words that you have to use i have put on the screen so obviously you have to say good morning good afternoon what is the matter open your have you all finished be quiet what does this particular word mean in our language in telugu this is a test you have 10 minutes to complete open your book okay so these are some of the classroom language that as a teacher we should know i want you to go through this and keep these words in mind okay <coughs> excuse me now another question that comes to our mind is when we talk about vocabulary what is important words or multi words multi words is nothing but combination of words two three words in order to improve our fluency if we learn separate words in isolation and we keep it in our notebook it is going to be of no use in order to improve your speaking skill multi words are important multi words means two three words this combination of words is important so if you want to speak fluently you have to learn multi words or 
phrases that is absolutely important these phrases or multi words are also called as formulaic expressions now what is formulaic expression this word comes in a formula you can't change if you want to say i don't know you can simply say i don't know i don't understand i don't want this can i have some water okay so i'm going to ask you can i have some water because i'm going to have some water now <coughs> look at these words just read these words these are some very common words that are used in spoken english so when you are thinking about formulaic expressions <coughs> you have to understand that multi words not words will help us okay now i told you these are multi words it is enough if you know them <coughs> excuse me but then you have to be much more descriptive in english whom do we say their spoken language is excellent people who are able to substitute words in a very interesting manner imagine you want to say that something is nice or something is good you can use these words excellent amazing this is wonderful okay so depending on the situation you can use these words if you are simply going to use nice or if you are going to repeat good then it becomes a little boring to listen you don't have very good speaking skills they will say you don't have to use all the words you can just pick and use certain words that you can find useful for your situation okay so you have to be be more descriptive describing words are very essential tomorrow we are looking at another vital component in spoken english that is language functions we will look at what are the various language functions and in that also we will see how describing words are essential look at the choice of words that uh, we can have now say for example on the left side i have some words now all these words refer to smell okay our sense of smell odor stench aroma smell fragrance stink and scent right from the facial expression you would have understood what the meanings of the words are so on the right side i have arranged these words right when i am saying there is a nice aroma inside the house something is being cooked okay so when they are cooking kongra or some you know very nice dish very nice aroma comes fragrance usually you say flowers and fragrance scent okay when we use all these deodorants or perfumes we say that scent is very nice now odor is a very neutral term we say water is a colorless odorless liquid and then you also say smell stench and stink these are all not very nice uh, you know you we usually say i smell a rat you smell some that's an idiom so there are words but then we should also know in what degree by degree i mean every word has a particular intensity okay now look at this language pattern when you want to express emotional intensity the words also become intense now say for example if i want to say i don't know i'm very upset by your marks i think you should be working hard annoyed i'm very annoyed by your behavior i don't know why you behaved like that angered furious and raged these are all you know higher levels of anger so you can check many words like this that is available to see the emotional intensity why i am showing these words is in their eagerness to speak when you learn lot 
sometimes there is a misplacement okay sometimes we will say oh the principal is very free because uh, you know the attendance register was not on the table or something why will somebody be furious somebody will be you know annoyed that is not a very uh, crucial thing if it is something very serious if a question paper has leaked then the principal has to be raged or furious okay so when you are learning words learn these colors also can you again see how upset is blue in color it is little cool but as you increase the intensity you can see how the colors are also changing so words are also like colors okay let us uh, move on now i told you the importance of multi words this is a very simple task like say for example when you somebody is asking how are you usually we say how are you these are all multi words please remember instead of learning how are you in we have to learn these as multi words we have to learn how is everything instead of asking how are you you can also ask how is everything how are things how is it going so what's been going on how have you been you can also be using these sentences as responses i'm doing fine i'm doing good i'm doing pretty good i'm doing great so you can use any of these options you can also say i've been busy so if you say i've been busy during the lockdown period nobody will believe same as always so you simply don't have to say i am doing fine you can say same as always some people say oh i'm fantastic that's a very enthusiastic answer when somebody says they are fantastic that energy you know i also get that energy oh i'm okay again can you see the intensity here when you say i am okay i am same as always what change again the intensity is very low when you are saying i am doing great i am fantastic then there is an increase right so all these intensities should also be uh, kept in mind when you are speaking english again if you look at tier 1 words you have certain things like these are all very common things that you will be using every day the first thing somebody asks us when you know they call us is where are you so if you want to answer that question where are you you can say i am at work i am at the office i am at home i am at school or wherever you are so these are all multi words that we have to keep in our mind sometimes you also can say in i am in my house you have to say at home but you have to say in my house okay house is physical so you have to say in my house at the office or in my office so these are all certain high frequency multi words that we use when you are talking about time you will be saying we will meet 7:30 pm these are all correct sentences that bullet mark you know that is in the wrong shape but these are correct sentences we'll meet at 7:30 let's meet at noon we will meet on monday on july 15 i always read better at night than i do in the morning so we we should not say at the morning at night we can say okay so these are all very small examples that i am giving you so that whenever you are speaking you can speak with lot of confidence and fluency again these are examples for people who want to improve their spoken english i am sure most of us know these things already again certain common phrases which we can learn and keep in our vocabulary i really appreciate your help i'm really sorry i didn't return your book i'm not sure if we should paint the wall yellow or blue what do you think that sounds fantastic oh never mind it's okay when do you say never mind when somebody makes a mistake you say it's okay never mind 
could you please repeat that when you are going to use please you should always use could you okay can you also you can use but could you is much more you know humble and polite could you please repeat that thank you that helps a lot now why i have listed these phrases is in spoken english if you do a research and find out it is absolutely important that we understand these phrases which are most frequently used now say for example when i got when i get a call from ap the first thing i will ask is hello naru bagunara because these are all high frequency i keep using them common phrases so i cannot uh, imagine uh, ela unnaru for me that comes as one word multi word so when we use these kinds of words also then it becomes part of our vocabulary now when you are speaking idioms and phrases are also one important aspect let us look at idioms first so most of you are this is one example of a idiom through pictures okay i use lot of pictures in my classroom to teach language those of you who have identified what this picture is about what is the idiom that is expressed in the picture can you please type it in the chat box please type it in the chat box what idiom this is now say for example when we say idioms we are saying he is the apple of my eye apple of the eye means somebody who is very important so my sons they are the apples of my eyes we can say okay so there are lot of idioms that we use idioms are like cultural expressions that don't have direct meaning but the meaning enriches spoken language so can you guess what this idiom refers to i am just checking the chat box now so many of you have started typing fat and thin opposite fat and thin thick and thin thick and thin yes you are absolutely right so thick and thin refers to lot of difficulties situations that we let us see the answer through good times and bad times so we have been friends through thick and thin right when you are speaking all these vocabulary uh, knowledge will also help you increase your fluency so through thick and thin means we have seen difficult times and good and good times so you know that's the example so this is another very easy idiom let me see whether you are typing the answer let me see whether you are typing the answer i hope it is raining in some parts of uh, andhra pradesh and also maharashtra extra all those areas can you tell me what this picture uh, refers to as an idiom yes i'll give you a minute just think so i think most of you sir cats and dogs it's raining cats and dogs is the right answer so this is a fun way of learning language so here after you will never forget whenever there is a rain you will say it is raining cats and dogs when there is a heavy rain okay so raining cats and dogs refers to raining heavily now this is one game that i usually play in my class also with my students what's the saying now this is a very famous mobile app also you can download and play this particular game lot of uh, common phrases will come now this is again another uh, uh, phrase which we use commonly can you see this picture this is called a rebus r e b u s rebus can you see this picture and can you tell me what the answer is you can see that the letters a s l e e p are there on the screen and you can see e e p something is happening so what is the phrase 
what is the common phrase that we use in order to explain this picture this rebus are you typing the answers so many entries are coming in so when you see a sleep that is partially on and that is partially off what is the phrase that we are talking about yes some of you have started typing the answer like many of you have typed is falling asleep fell asleep very good so falling asleep refers to you can see how asleep is falling if you play games like this in the class your students also will love it you can also enjoy so you you don't say he is going asleep he is coming asleep maybe in uh, you know mujhe neend aata hai we say but then we i am uh, coming sleep we usually say we usually say you know i think i am falling asleep now let us move on so falling asleep is the answer very good here is another uh, phrase so you can see secret 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 written three times but one secret alone is circled what is that what is this phrase take some time think and type your answers what is the phrase that we use most commonly in our language when we write this of course many of you have typed it right the answer is yes i'm checking all your chats now top secret excellent very good so the answer is top secret okay i have another one also you can see the words personality on the screen so personality what has happened to personality you can just think okay the answer personality has been divided into two we talk about split personality okay split personality he is a split personality you know one day he will talk there is the question here thank uh, you so what is the difference between a dictionary and a, a thesaurus okay so dictionary and a thesaurus a dictionary refers to a compilation of all the words with its meanings it will be given in a very simple form right sometimes the meaning of the word will be more confusing than the word itself but a thesaurus refers to a word substitute if you are using a thesaurus you will be knowing what are the substitutes of that particular word now say for example if you are looking for the word big the meaning for the word big if i am giving you large huge enormous the child will be confused because the child wouldn't have come across that word yet but in a thesaurus for big it will be given large huge enormous gigantic so that is the difference we start learning with a dictionary but as we improve we start using a thesaurus thesaurus are also available in online mobile phones see uh, that's a such person was he's asking What is the difference between vocabulary and glossary? Vocabulary and glossary. Okay. Now, vocabulary refers to words itself. It's a very general idea. It refers to words, their usage, their meanings. But glossary refers to a particular set of words. Now, say for example, we are reading a lesson. At the end of it, there will be a glossary. the words in the glossary will come only in the lesson glossary has a specific purpose but vocabulary is a wide term okay thank you much ma'am uh, rp p sundari she is asking that uh, from where we can get uh, root words in stand uh, in the book ah okay yes uh, please note this down this book is called as word power it is by norman lewis okay n o r m a n l e w i s now in this particular book he uses the 
etymology method the root word method in order to learn lot of words okay i will also share these details in the reading material so you can also go through all those uh, words it is a self study book and if you definitely you know your vocabulary will improve a lot so that is one and there are many books but this is one book that i have used and i know that you know it's a very good book it's also available online for free pdf also thank you very much ma'am there yeah, uh, one more here what is the importance of spelling and pronunciation what is the importance of spelling and pronunciation yesterday purnima was talking about homophone yes yeah. in homophones if you see words are similar sounds are similar but then the spelling is different so definitely depending on the spelling when you are learning vocabulary you should give attention you should give attention to pronunciation all these aspects thank you very much thank you uh, person sundar uh, she is he is asking that how to introduce immortal vocabulary to our students especially primary students how to introduce important vocabulary now say for example contextual vocabulary now say for example the lesson uh, refers to going to the railway station so when you are going to the railway station there are some words that are important so what the teacher can do is the teacher can say okay now imagine you are a passenger you are a ticket uh, inspector so you are the you know engineer or somebody who is on the uh, train technical you are the police what, what words will you say so we can try and contextualize every lesson when you are transacting in classroom it becomes very effective and easy also to introduce the words then the children can try and learn more words contextually thank you very much ma'am thank you very much ma'am sir we uh, have any questions with you no 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 yeah really uh, very amazing presentation thank you sir uh, myself also uh, immensely uh, in the presentation <laughs> learned many things and uh, what to do uh, to learn good english or uh, learn much uh, vocabulary so many tips we have uh, given in the presentation hope all the teachers will uh, make use of the tips so that they can improve their vocabulary so you have given the tips no what i have given today tips only it is just the tip of the iceberg so yeah. the iceberg is very big we have to go and explore the teachers have to explore and learn a lot i'm sure they will do that so even in the last class when i spoke about all the videos there were so many queries asking ma'am give us the youtube link ma'am tell us that so i know that many of them are working on that yes ma'am yes you may you should bring all the passive vocabulary to into active really sure, that sure. is the need of the hour so that improves the fluency and quality of uh, language speaking so thank exactly. you very much ma'am uh, we'll try yes. for that so uh, on behalf of all the teachers uh, we uh, extend our gratitude to you ma'am thank you very much uh, we'll uh, to for tomorrow uh, we have another uh, interesting topic for tomorrow also on uh, day 8 uh, uh, at the end one a small uh, uh, you know information to our viewers sure. so regarding abhyas app yesterday so many asked that we are unable to find out assessment so uh, whenever you find uh, difficult into that you do one thing go to the library in the abhyas app and put the date suppose today if you want to find out assessment then go to that abhyas um, library and type the date 04-06-2020 then you can find the collection of that day material like uh, reading material webinar video and assessment there you click on the assessment and do that so if you want to have uh, for yesterday's type the yesterday date then it will come okay so please pass the information to the teachers who are facing trouble certainly it will help you thank you thank you very much
thank you very much for tomorrow we have another interest, interesting topic languages language functions in spoken english with uh, dr shobha garu uh, we will wait for that uh, topic and by uh, today we will signing out and uh, we'll come uh, at tomorrow i request all the viewers to uh, be uh, stick to our channel subscribe channel and share the channel so thank you very much uh, namaste